your life with an edge. It can be hard at times. My friends say I'm really strong. And my family thinks I'm really strong to handle all the stuff that I've been through without any tears most of the time. Cat, she was born on Christmas Eve. Two months after she was born, I started seeing like spots on her. So I Googled like multiple birthmarks and this um, word came up, which was neurofibromatosis. I was scared because when you look up NF, you know, not only can it cause tumors to grow on nerves throughout your body, but it can also can cause like disfiguration. It could cause blindness, deafness, dismemberment. So we went up to Seattle Children's Hospital. They did a genetic test on her. And a year from the day that she was born, we found out she had neurofibromatosis officially. I work very hard on oh this. Oh my gosh! <gasps> Beautiful! <laughs> Can you tell me about it? Yes. I painted some red. Uh huh. Cat is a beautiful, compassionate person. Knowing that your child has something that is incurable, it's been a, a challenging experience. It's been something where we've had to train ourselves to be in the moment with everything. Where are you going? Oh, you are? Yeah. Especially when kids are younger, you know, we have to be mindful of how we want to communicate with the children. She was making me run when I had my biopsy, when I wasn't supposed to run mm. for until... Uh, being able to understand her medical condition a little bit more, that has brought about some of the other, um, other challenges with that too. We always want to shield our kids from hardship as much as possible. That's not very realistic. We feel like we are a nice united front and talked about what the next steps are. <laughs> I am visually impaired, that's what they call it. And what that means is that if you said, hey, cat, do you see that sign? I'd be like, where, where? Or, hey, cat, do you see that car coming? Where, where is it coming from? The tumor in my eyes, I could become blind forever. And that is really scary for me. I do get scared of that happening because I want to see the whole world. I want to see like how the world changes because in the future, the world is going to change. I can promise you that right now. I basically know how to read another language, bro. It's it's not an easy thing. It's really, really hard to learn. It's harder than you could ever imagine. There's many things I can't do. Like my friends can play a light up dodgeball in the gym, but I can't do that because I can hardly even see the balls coming and going. So I just mostly play on the swings with my friends because swinging on the swings, it helps me like with my anxiety. I was about eight or nine when I found out about cats' tumors. You know, it was definitely a progressive moment of not knowing at such a young age what that is, I mean, it's super scary. You know, this is family and this is someone that I want to spend the rest of my life with. <laughs> when she was in judo. Uh, yeah. Being able to handle it emotionally as yes. we've gone through these years, and just when you think you're as tough as you can be dealing with it, something else pops up and it just, kind of brings you back to 
being worried and scared again. Last year, when Kat was ready for her MRI again, I could tell the minute Dr. Sato came in, something was going on. She said, there's this other spot on her brain sitting on top of the thalamus, and it had tripled in size in three months' time. And that was really scary because it's inoperable. Dr. Dr. Sato, we got a call from her. She said, I had to start a new chemo. I don't want to start a new chemo. I was surprised, because I was like, I just don't like chemotherapy. It's really, it's hard because it makes me feel nauseous, headaches, and tummy aches. And it makes me get sick really, really easily. Last year, I missed way more days of school than I could probably even count. My NF can cause death so I could die and be in heaven forever. And my sister and my family and my friends, only being able to see them from up high in heaven, that's scary, because I'll never be able to hug them again. They'll never be able to hear my voice. I get scared of that really happening, because family's really important to me. I really bury myself in work. I do that because if I have a moment to pause and I think about things like I am right now, I get really worked up um, because I'm scared, because I'm tired, I'm stressed, and, and I'm just like, I am doing the best I can. I was just super like alone. I felt really out of like the loop of what was going on with my sister. And honestly, I just feel like I really just didn't have that support system growing up, honestly. And I just had to maneuver a lot of things my own way. It's really hard seeing your little sister cry out of pain because she's hurt and you can't do anything about it. Even though, like, she's going through so much, like, she will literally, like, be the one holding us, telling us, like, it's okay. I don't think of NF as a disability. I think of it as a superpower. I think of it unique. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, good job. <laughs> My third grade teacher, Ms. Ted Watkins, said, when you cry, that's showing more of your bravery than not crying. I have a loving family who's going to care for me, who's gonna love me. Family's forever.